Dr. Beeky, thanks for sitting down. One of the things that I wanted to ask you is regarding the subject of discipline and work ethic. Uh, our country, the one we live in now, the United States of America, was founded upon what's called the reformed work ethic. And I was reading even recently about Martin Luther, who talk, used to talk about the division of the secular and the sacred, meaning that all of our work, whether we are a housewife or a pastor is, as you mentioned in a previous episode, quorum deo, before the eyes of God and before the face of God to the glory of God. But that idea has kind of been lost in our cultural context. And what's sad is that people are often leaning towards lazy, even in a Christian context. So one, why is work so important as something a Christian needs to understand biblically, just the value of work. And two, how do we implement discipline in our lives? Yeah, my wife just wrote a book on work called Teaching Children How to Work, Building okay. a Positive Work Ethic in Children. And so I've been talking a lot with her in the last few, few years about mm -hmm. work and the importance of work. Um, the first thing we need to remember about work is that work is a pre-fall institution. So work itself is not a curse. The fall of man made some unpleasant things come into the sphere of work, like Just thorns and thistles. Nature, yeah. yeah, but it didn't take away the beauty of work. God has designed us uh, inherently as his image bearers to work, to reflect him. Jesus said, my father worketh hitherto and I work. So work is a gift of God. Uh, a man, for example, without work, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, there, I read a study of men who retired to Florida, just retired in cold turkey, and they go to Florida, and they're going to enjoy the rest of their life, right? Golfing. Just golfing or yeah. Yeah, fishing, yeah. yeah. And um, the end result of the study is that the average man who goes to Florida lives less than five years. Well, that's pretty short, <laughs> but the, the, you know how to draw that connection. I mean, you know, and I'm not going to go into that. But what I'm saying is, eaten by gators. Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying is, you lose, you lose something when you're not contributing. God made us to be contributors to society or to His kingdom directly in ministerial work of one kind or another. So work is a gift of God, and you want to you want to say to yourself, don't you? You, if you want to live to the glory of God, even when you eat and drink, do all to the glory of God. When you work, you want to do it all to the glory of God. You want to live, as one of my parishioners used to say, who's now in glory, every day he would pray, Lord, let me live wholly and solely to thee. So every day I want to ask God, let my work today be useful, let it be fruitful, and let it be to thy glory. And you want to you want to pursue work in a way that you thoroughly enjoy it. And I think you can thoroughly enjoy it best when you're doing it consciously to God's glory. And that includes mundane work. Uh, there's a wonderful story of a guy named Horatius Boner, a 19th century guy, and he's walking along the street. He's somewhat depressed about the lack of fruit on his work, and he sees three guys working in a dusty pit, and uh, they're working on a on a, a steeple for a church, but it's very dirty, dusty, choky. It just looks like such undesirable work. So he says to the first guy, he says, do you enjoy your work? Oh, the guy says, not really. He said, well, why are you working? He said, well, I gotta put, I gotta put bread on the table for my wife, I got two kids, and I, I really hate my job. He looks at the second guy, he says, do you enjoy your work? Oh, it's okay, it's a job. Um, pays the bills, and uh, uh, I can't say I mind it. Looks at the third guy and says, do you enjoy your work? Oh, yes, sir, I love my work. He goes, Why do you, what do you love about being down there in the dirt and the dust? And he goes, you see what I'm chiseling out right here? That's gonna go up there. And uh, the guy said, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm gonna do it, for, I'm doing this for the glory of God. And, a lot of people are going to see this and benefit from it when I'm all done. So I do my work with pleasure, sir. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Hmm. And the point is that that picked up Horatius Bonar in his depression because he said, all the work I'm doing as a pastor, I'm really doing it for one day that these people will be up there glorifying God, in, of course, in heaven. And when you can have an eternity in view in your work, you know, 
That is, that makes all the difference. So if you're a, a mother at home and you, you just say, is this worthwhile changing diapers every, <laughs> every 30 minutes or whatever? But you remember, this is God's calling to me at this moment to live to his glory. And I'm rearing this child for the glory of God. And part of that rearing of this child is changing diapers, doing the mundane. So you learn to enjoy even the mundane because everything is being done for, for, for God's glory. And that puts a spring in your step. That gives, you, that gives you strength to discipline yourself. And so, yeah, not every part of your work will be inherently as enjoyable as every other part of your work. I don't like long meetings, but I, I put it in context and say, okay, this long meeting, I think went longer than necessary, but nothing on earth is perfect. And this long meeting is all part and parcel of my, of my bigger panorama of work. And it comes with a territory. And so I embrace it and I accept it. And I rejoice that I have good things to do for the glory of God. That's helpful, Dr. Beeky. Now, you've already answered it uh, to a degree, but especially amongst, you know, Gen Z millennials today, there's this idea that, hey, if you enjoy what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. And that's the encouragement maybe they receive from their professors or their parents is find something you love and you'll feel like you've never worked a day in your life. Why is that idea maybe divorced from reality? And is there ever a job where work won't feel like work? <laughs> I'd like to reverse that question around. I want work to feel like work because I don't see work as a negative word. I see work as a positive word. So yeah. the whole idea of you don't have to work a day in your life sounds horrible to me. Because <laughs> God made Just you to work. horrible to me, yeah. <laughs> I mean, work is positive. So we take words like work and discipline and submission and, and even, even in some ways God, and we, we turn them into negative things. And we need to take a break from our work. Um, okay, yes, I need to take a break from my work. I need to do a certain amount of recreation, enjoyable things, a breathing space. Yeah. But I do those things so I can get back to my work and live to the glory of God. So the work is not something that you wish you didn't have to do, that you wish you could get down from 40 hours a week to 35 because, you know, you want to do your own thing. So when you see your work, not as a job, but as a vocatio, a vocation, a calling from God, then it's altogether different, you see. Then you treasure it. Mm. Then you can't wait to get to work. Then you, I, I had a man tell me one time, if you're a Christian and you really have a right understanding of work and you're working for the Lord, when you look at your watch and it's four o'clock in the afternoon, you say, oh, is it really that late already? Yeah. Because you, you enjoy fulfilling your vocatio. Mm. And you don't want it to be five o'clock yet, where you, where, you know, where you, where maybe your day is done. You, because you want to get more done. You, you, you're disciplined. You, you have this work ethic. It's a calling you, from God. Yeah, yeah. you want to do as much as you can for the glory of God in any day. That's helpful. And even what you said about rest and leisure, I think sometimes people have a skewed pers like perspective that we work so we can rest rather than we rest so we can work. Precisely. That's a good way of putting it. And uh, I've, I feel like at times rest is elevated in the minds of many people today without ever establishing a biblical framework that work is a gift from God. It's a pre-fall institution. And we don't, we're not chasing after retirement. We're going to work until we meet the Lord face to face. And even that element, I think what you mentioned about Jesus, I think it's always interesting that one of the key words in the book of Mark is immediately, the, book, the word is used 45 yeah. times because yeah. he was on a mission. And uh, as his, and those who follow him as his servants, we, we want to implement our savior in that regard. So what you said was really helpful. So thank you for your time, Dr. Beeky. Thank you.